So, uh, hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming to the talk. My name is Hengzhi, you can call me Heng. I work at Google Research. And today I'm very excited to tell you all about widened deep learning and how you can use it to combine the power of memorization and generalization on TensorFlow. At Google, we started the Wide and Deep project with a mission to combine the power of memorization and generalization on one unified machine learning platform for everyone. And when we say everyone, we really mean not just every product team at Google, but also everyone in the open source community, everyone in the academia, as well as industry. So we started uh, working towards this mission by jointly training wide linear models on the left and deep neural networks on the right and create an a easy to use API, a uh, high level API available in TensorFlow so users can start with simple linear models and gradually add complexity without ever having to leave the platform. So the first question is, what do we really mean by memorization and generalization? And to answer that, uh, before we dive into machine learning, let's take a step back to think about how we learned as humans. So as little kids, we start forming our knowledge by observing everyday events. For example, seagulls can fly, or pigeons can fly. Right? We're very good at memorizing these maybe unrelated boring facts uh, very precisely, right? but as you can imagine, this good memorization probably doesn't scale well to over 8 million animal species in the world. You're not going to see all of them and not going to memorize all of their names and whether they can fly or not. So with a very powerful uh, step in our learning is generalization. By saying animals with wings can fly, we're basically summarizing all these uh, sparse uh, observations into one very compact representation of knowledge, and that's whether the animal has wings or not. Right? Using this compact rules, you can uh, generalize to many more animals you may or may not have seen before. However, generalization has its own limitations, because uh, it doesn't always work uh, on all cases. For example, penguins, well, at least they try, but the best they can do is some sort of free fall into the ocean, right? So the, the, real, uh, the real power uh, lies in how do we combine the power of memorization and generalization. And interestingly, this is very similar to what we observed uh, uh, in the progression from a pure wide model for memorization to a pure deep model, which gives us more power in generalization, and finally, uh, in combining wide and deep, uh, which is generalization plus memorizing exceptions, which is saying animals with wings can fly, but penguins cannot fly. Okay. So enough with the hypothetical um, animal examples. Now let's come back to a real world example and I'll walk you through it. In this running example, we'll see how we can apply uh, wide, deep, and wide and deep learning on the Google Play app's recommendation problem. So suppose one of our uh, favorite user, Chris, recently installed the Priceline app. The question we want to ask is, which other apps should we now recommend? Right? And one way to frame this problem is uh, to frame the recommendation problem as retrieval and ranking. So let's start from the upper left, where I'll walk you through a life of a query. So we get a query from the users in the recommendation system case. It's the user feature plus some contextual features, maybe at the time, and so on. And then our retrieval system will retrieve the relevant items that are related to this user and context, and maybe, let's say, give us hundreds of candidates, right? The ranking module will rank these uh, candidates and present the most promising ones, uh, the most relevant ones, to the user. The user take a look at the items on uh, their phones, and they can take one of the uh, possible actions, like click on the app, install the app, and so on. All of these are recorded in the logs, uh, which the learner picks up, uh, 
and trains a new model. And this new model will power the next iteration of ranking. And that's a cycle of recommendation. Right? So this talk will focus on how we use widened deep learning to solve the ranking model of this app recommendation uh, uh, problem. And the query features, as I said, is user and contextual features. The item features are the app impression features, which, which we show to the user's phones. And the objective we're optimizing for is app installs. So if the user install the app, the label is 1. Otherwise, the label is 0. Okay. So let's get started. Now, the first, uh, probably the simplest model you can pick is a linear model, uh, or known as logistic regression in this case. So the inputs are uh, a bunch of features. Right? You can have the user features, installed app as price line, and impression features, which is if we show Kayak as impression, what's the likelihood of install? Right? So the impression app, let's say, is Kayak, and we want to predict the probability that the user will install the app. Now, how do we add generalized uh, memorization capability? This can be done by adding a, a crossed feature, which is the AND operation over the binary uh, base features. So the cross feature can be install app is price line and impression app is kayak. If both are true, what is the likelihood of install, right? And if we go into the data and we see a lot of correlation, people who install this also install that later, then you can memorize this frequent co-occurrence of these features. Right? So crosses help you with that. Now, you might think that, well, that's very specific, right? How do we actually generalize to other apps uh, that are not Priceline or Kayak? Well, uh, one way you can do with wide linear models is to add less specific features like app categories. So for example, if you add a cross saying, uh, if install app category is travel, and the impression app category is also travel, what is the likelihood of user installing that? Right? So you, once you learn this, you can apply to other travel apps, not just Priceline or Kayak. Now, the problem, which my, you might have uh, seen already, is that the feature space is very wide and very sparse. There are millions of apps, billions of users. If you cross apps with apps, that's a million times million, which is trillion combinations. right? So most of these user impression apps uh, pairs will never occur in your training data. So uh, how do you actually generalize to these unseen pairs without doing a lot of manual feature engineering that we did in the uh, last slide? right? And remember, in many cases, uh, it might be hard for humans to come up with these really good, high-level, less specific feature crosses in the first place. So one way to solve this, to generalize more automatically, is to use deep neural network with a uh, dense embedding layer. So uh, starting from the bottom, you still have your base uh, binarized uh, features, which is user install price line, and let's say impression app is Yelp now. And let's say you never shown you happen to ha never shown Yelp after people who install Priceline, so you cannot memorize. Now, one way you can train this is uh, for each unique feature ID, you look up a uh, dense embedding vector, and these are initialized randomly. So initially, you will make a very poor prediction, and you compare the uh, error between your prediction and the ground truth label, and you start adjusting your embeddings so you, you predict better and better. Right? So over time, uh, uh, you, the embeddings will act more like automatically extracted features, high-level features that uh, very well describe these uh, base features. So combined with the hidden layers on top of it, you can now uh, automatically learn complex interactions uh, between these base features. Now, uh, we've talked about wide and talked about deep. So when is wide better than deep and vice versa? So we can look into the traffic patterns. So on the left, using the wide model, you're uh, basically learning a matrix to memorize which user install app and impression app combinations uh, correlates with install and which one doesn't. The problem is there are these uh, question marks, which means there are no data. 
uh, to train on. So uh, if you notice that there, in the rows and columns, there are a lot of repetitive or similar structures you can leverage. So if you map all of these apps onto a lower dimension embedding space on the right, uh, you might have that uh, similar apps, uh, they will be closer to each other in the embedding space. So you can now um, generalize your prediction to any app uh, in the embedding space. Right? And in this hypothetical example on the left, you will need 22 floats numbers to memorize uh, these interactions, whereas on the right, you only need 20 floats to store the embeddings. Being able to kind of represent uh, the same or even richer information using less uh, number of parameters, meaning you're leveraging the structure of the data better. Now, on the other hand, there are a lot of uh, specific user taste, niche apps, or uh, just exceptions in, uh, in the app training data. Right? So for example, uh, a Sheldon Cooper Bazinga app would make, probably wouldn't make sense to recommend unless the user have seen the show Big Bang Theory. Right? So there are all these uh, kind of uh, niche combinations. And if we use uh, a wide model to memorize, uh, you can just use five ways to memorize this diagonal matrix in this hypothetical example. Right? Whereas if you still try to learn a low dimensional embedding, then you will still need 20 floats. And now the learner will try very hard to push these irrelevant apps away from each other, but find it very hard to do so in a crowded, low dimension embedding space. And what will happen is um, you will accidentally uh, recommend less relevant apps to the user. And that's partly because you know, if you have a high rank sparse matrix like the diagonal matrix on the left, it's theoretically uh, very hard or impossible to find these lower dimensional embedding that will reconstruct uh, the left. Okay? So our idea is very simple. Why not just combine the power of wide and deep? Right? So we not only get the combination of memorization and generalization, and in many uh, recommendation systems and search ranking problems, we often want to balance uh, relevance versus diversity as well, so we satisfy our users' need. So that's what we did. We jointly train a wide linear model and deep neural network uh, simultaneously by backpropagating to both sides at the same time in, in training. So we connect them to the same loss function and backprop uh, to both sides. Now, uh, you might notice that this is uh, somewhat similar to uh, common ensemble model, uh, but in the ensemble model, you would train two models separately without knowing each other, and only at pr uh, prediction time, you will combine their predictions, right? So uh, we've been trying both, and what we observed that is doing a joint training, because they know each other in the training time, the white model only need to augment what the deep model cannot learn well, um, and vice versa. So you often get a much smaller model, whereas if you train an ensemble, both models need to be a fairly large and self-sufficient models, so you, the ensemble will make a good prediction. And we're definitely actively working on comparing uh, the performance of both, and we're uh, happy to hear what you find as well. Okay. So what uh, this is what we got uh, eventually that was launched into the production of Google Play Apps recommendation. So it's a uh, three-layer neural networks on the left. Um, and down below, you have your continuous feature and categorical features that feeds into the model. And this is augmented by a cross-product transformation, a cross between the user install app and the impression app. And both are connected to the logistic loss for joint training. And we published this uh, result in the paper previously. Uh, we ran online experiments on Google Play, and we've seen that the wide and deep model had a significant 4% gain on our uh, wide model, which is a very mature, highly optimized previous generation model that's been used. 
And we also compare it with the deep part of the wide and deep model, and it has a 1% gain on top of it. And that's pretty significant uh, for Google Play. Now, the good news is all these you can do today uh, in about 10 lines of code using the high-level estimator API, which uh, Martin and others have talked about. So all you have to do is first define the features you want to use in your wide models um, and configure the crosses uh, you think that might be useful for memorizing uh, a lot of combinations. And second part, you define the features you want to use in the deep model and the embedding configurations. And finally, define your model structure, like how many hidden layers, how wide is the hidden layers, and boom, you can start training right away. So uh, I, I encourage you to uh, go online and search for wide and deep learning to uh, learn more uh, about uh, wide and deep on the, uh, from the resources we provide. So um, we've open sourced it. Uh, we have blog post, a paper, a YouTube video, and also TensorFlow tutorials to walk you through these. And we found it useful for general recommendation, search, and ranking problems, especially if you have sparse categorical inputs with a large number of unique uh, feature values. Um, we're excited to learn uh, if you find it useful in other use cases as well. And finally, I think we all want to learn wider and deeper about machine learning and maybe just everything else. Um, but I think the true power lies in the word together. So in the Wide and Deep project, we brought two pretty different modeling techniques together on uh, one unified platform, and that benefited many product teams at Google. And by open sourcing and sharing the, uh, our findings, uh, you and we are now able to collaborate uh, even though even if we're not in the same organization. And together, we can get a deeper understanding um, of how to combine these machine learning technologies with a community that's wider than ever. And I think that's a very powerful thing. So I'd like to thank all the contributors to the Wide and Deep project. And thank you very much for listening to uh, the talk today. Thank you.